to show you a project that I'm working on. Um, because of the high cost of energy these days, I'm trying to figure out a way to make our home a little bit more efficient. And one of the ways I thought of was to try to capture the dryer heat. Um, all that heat goes right outside. Uh, the problem with that is, is there's a lot of moisture in the uh, air that uh, comes out of the dryer and so I want the heat but I don't want the moisture going into the house so what I did is I got this 55 gallon drum from work and I started by cutting two holes in it uh, right there and right there and putting in a connection and um, the dryer air will actually go in the bottom connection and come out the top connection in order to make it a more efficient heat exchanger, uh, what I did is drilled four holes in the top here. So if I tip it over, you can see the holes, uh, the four holes that I drilled. And then I did the same with the top, the cover. Uh, this drum here happens to have a removable top which makes it uh, nicer uh, because I can what I did is I set um, this on top of the bottom there and I was able to drill through so the hole should line up so once I put the top on all these holes that I drilled right here that made it easier for these holes to line up uh, then what I'll have is I'll have this uh, drain spout here and the drain spout will drain any moisture uh, that's condensed in the drum to the bottom of the drum and then I'll just run a hose to a floor drain and then going up through the center of the four holes here I've got this aluminum ductwork it's four inch and um, I will put that through the center uh, one through each of these holes here and then um, I'll actually glue that right to the drum uh, one of the nice things about having a removable top is uh, once a year you can take it back apart and you can clean the lint out of it. So any lint that's accumulated um, you'll be able to clean that out and, and uh, you won't have a lint build up. So I'll continue putting it together and um, you'll see the finished product here. Now here you can see, now here's the four pipes that are going to go down through the center of the drum and that should help with the uh, heat exchange. Uh, these are made out of aluminum and unfortunately they only had them in two foot lengths so I cut one down the size to make a total overall length of three feet. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, on the barrel here I'll put the clamp on the top and then um, I'll run the pipes down through the center and uh, glue those in with co uh, construction adhesive. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, this is kind of the pipes going through. And uh, because the tight pipes are a uh, tight fit, I have to uh, run them in one side, and then I'll have to tip it over and put the cover on and run them through the cover at the same time. Which could be a challenge, but I think we can do it. And now you can see uh, we have the tubes put through. I have the top of the barrel clamped on, and I've got about one inch uh, sticking out of each side there. So you can see then, what will happen is uh, air will go right through the center of these tubes here and be picking up heat uh, from inside the drum that's blowing in through the dryer right there. Now it looks like I could have probably even put another tube right in the center there, uh, but that would have probably made the construction a little bit harder to put together because uh, of that center tube. It actually went fairly well. What I did is um, when I put this top on here because of the uh, tight fit in the pipe I just used about a 15 thousandths feeler gauge and ran it all around the pipe in order to make the pipe slide through the hole easier because it kind of wanted to hang up. So now the next step will be to take construction adhesive and uh, seal in the pipes. No, I have uh, both sides of the pipes here um, glued in with construction adhesive so what we'll do is we'll just let this stuff sit here and dry I guess and 
then eventually what I'll do is I'll, I will build a wood stand and uh, I'll have it off the ground probably oh I'm guessing maybe two feet and uh, really if you didn't have a floor drain handy I guess you could probably just use a bucket and let the condensate drip in the bucket I'm not really opposed to a little bit of moisture uh, leaking into the surrounding area um, I just don't want a lot I want to be able to control it okay continuing on with the next phase of the project here um, I built an air box for the bottom and I built this out of scrap materials that I just had laying around here to keep the costs down what you can see is that will lift the heat exchanger off the ground and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 20 inch 20 inch box fan on this side here that will blow air in and will blow air through the tubes and that should improve the heat exchange you can see the uh, outlet here and the inlet on the bottom uh, for the dryer now I should also state that I'm using a, an electric dryer if you're using a gas dryer uh, the possibility of carbon monoxide escaping from any leaks that you would have um, could introduce carbon monoxide into the house and so I wouldn't do it myself with a uh, gas dryer um, I've also added the valve here in the bottom uh, for draining condensate uh, because you you're, you're um, sending out moisture in the uh, dryer or from the dryer and when you cool that off that's going to want to condense and so you're going to need to drain the moisture out of the barrel so the moisture does not collect inside so the next step will be uh, installing it hooking it up to the dryer uh, but because the uh, temperature is still pretty warm outside um, I'm not going to install it quite yet um, we don't really need the heat in the house so once the temperature's cooled down a little bit and I install it, um, we'll finish up this project. Now the temperatures outside have finally started dropping enough now where I think we can probably go with the installation here of the heat exchanger. And so you can see that I have um, the dryer, the heat exchanger, and then uh, what I'm going to do is use this little box fan and while the dryer is running, I'll uh, run the box fan which will blow air underneath and up through the tubes uh, helping the heat transfer process and here's another view um, the heat exchanger is sitting on the wooden frame that I built out of uh, the scrap wood and what that does is uh, that creates three walls around the bottom of the heat exchanger and so when the air blows into the wood frame um, that will force air up through the pipes on the heat exchanger and so we'll just kind of move the box fan away and you can see where the air will blow I also put some um, towels down on the floor in case we get a little uh, rusting or anything from the drum that drips down so it doesn't stain the floor and there's also the drain valve that you can see right there and uh, what I'm going to do there is um, after we run it for a little bit I'll just um, open up the drain and drain any condensate that's been stored in the drum and here's kind of a look from the side and I don't know if it'll be real visible or not but um, we have the outlet here and that's just going into the main dryer pipe that's going outside and then um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it too well, but we have the outlet coming out and uh, going down uh, from the dryer there into the inlet. And so now all we have to do is uh, fire it up, see how it works. And so I'll be doing that right now.